What's going on everyone? My name is Talon Sai and you are watching Sunday Gun Day. I hope you're all having a great Sunday so far. Today, I've got a treat in my hands right now, a revolver. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know I'm not a huge revolver guy. However, this one definitely does it for me. Before we get into this, if you guys enjoy these videos, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Also check us out over on Patreon. If you wanna show the most support for Sunday Gun Day, you can join over there for just five bucks a month. You get early access to all the videos, behind the scenes photos of different projects that I have going on, exclusive access to the Discord where you can meet the rest of the community, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, and a lot more, so go check that out. Also, TS-19 barrels, still available. Go check out SciProductions.com for more info on that stuff. Anyone who orders a barrel will be put first in line for the next TS-43X and TS-19 drop. That's a new one that's coming. Still don't have an ETA date on that, so don't even ask me, but you guys will be notified first. So with all of that out of the way, we're jumping right into this revolver. Coming from the Smith & Wesson Performance Center, the model 327 TRR8. The model 327 TRR8 is built around Smith & Wesson's end frame, which is a larger revolver frame capable of handling some pretty hot 44 Magnum loads. However, in the case of the TRR8, this is actually an eight shot 357 Magnum revolver. The frame is made out of a scandium alloy, which keeps the revolver light overall without actually sacrificing any strength. Because this gun is coming out of the Performance Center shop, it does of course come with a Performance Center tuned trigger with a stop built in. And this model comes equipped with a synthetic grip and a five inch barrel length. The way the gun comes out of the box, it's weighing in at 34.7 ounces. However, they do include equipment rails. So depending on what you mount onto those, the gun will end up weighing a little bit more. In my case, I kind of went all out with a Surefire X300 Ultra. And then on top, I'm running a Trigicon RMR RM07. Now, as of right now, I don't have a whole lot to say about this thing, except the way I set it up is kind of ridiculous, but I'm sure I'll have a lot more to say after I grab a first cylinder impression. First mag impression, first cylinder impression, same thing. It's been quite a while since I've shot a revolver, so I'm actually really looking forward to this one. These revolvers do ship with a moon clip, that way you can sort of like speed load the cylinder. However, I forgot it at home, so for now I'm just gonna be loading them by hand and just extracting them all messy-like. I have absolutely no idea where this RMR is zeroed, but hey, let's see how it goes. Oh man. It's all eight. All right guys, first cylinder impression on the Performance Center TRR8. Like I mentioned, it's been a while since I shot a revolver and that 357 Magnum definitely packs a punch. This is actually the first end frame revolver that I own from Smith & Wesson and it feels really good in my hand. So as far as the ergonomics go, I really like the synthetic grip. I of course like that the gun is all black everything, but even with some maybe like walnut grips on there or something like that, I think it would look pretty good. Now it sounds kind of funny, but this gun is actually designed as a tactical revolver. Typically those two words really don't go together. But for a revolver like this, there is actually some situations where this may be preferred over another option like say a Glock 19 or 17, or just a semi-automatic pistol in general. I think the two main use cases for a gun like this would be one, if you don't want to leave casings behind for whatever reason. That's just a pro of revolvers in general. And then the second thing, in a tactical application, if a police officer or someone in the military is using a revolver like this, it would be a great combo to use a gun like this with a riot shield. Now picture this right here as a riot shield. If I have a semi-auto gun like a Glock 19 or a 17, and you are presenting out into a room, there's a good chance that the slide is going to be running up against the side of that riot shield. And if you have front serrations or maybe an optic mounted on there, there is a chance that you could get a hang up causing a malfunction. And of course you don't want that going into 
a room where there's a lot of unknowns. And then in the case of the TRR-8, a revolver with a five inch barrel, it's going to be sticking out a little bit further. And then the cylinder actually is not even touching the edge of the made up shield right here. You don't have anything reciprocating back and forth so I can shoot with the barrel right up against it just like this. The cylinder is free to rotate even if I bring it all the way in up against it like this. So because this is a revolver over a semi-auto pistol, I think this actually would fit into some tactical roles maybe for people in the FBI, SWAT teams, and different places like that. Now as far as the accessories go, this gun did ship with the two equipment rails. They were not installed so I went ahead and put those on because I just wanted to make this thing kind of ridiculous. And throwing an RMR and an X300 on there, in my opinion, is kind of ridiculous. It does come standard with some blacked out sights and then a little brass bead up front on the front sight post. I haven't even shot the gun with those, but I'm just going to assume that they're working fine because it's Smith & Wesson, it's a performance center. So I went right ahead and installed the equipment rails on both the top and the underside. The first thing I put on was the Trigicon RMR. I got the lowest mount possible also coming from Trigicon and I did not zero this thing at all. I actually pulled this off of my honey badger, I believe. So this was an old optic that I had zeroed on a 300 blackout pistol, almost SBR. Dropped it right on here and I was shooting from 15 yards and it seems to be somewhat zeroed. I hit the target every time, so we're gonna take this thing back a little bit further and see how far I can actually shoot with this thing. Now real quick, I wanna talk about the practicality of having an RMR and a light like this on a pistol this size. When it comes to the RMR, I believe it could be practical. The only thing that you're dealing with is a huge height over bore. The red dot is coming out right about here and the bullets are coming out right about here, which means you're going to have a crazy holdover when you are at close distances with an offset like that. That's something that you obviously train for. I'm not going to be carrying this revolver or using it in any like serious capacity, at least not yet. So as of now, that's definitely gonna take some getting used to when presenting out with a revolver like this. You may have to fish around for it a little bit. I know I definitely do because I'm used to shooting some other more standard types of pistols. And then when it comes to the light, the thing that's not super practical about this is that to turn it on, like, eh, like how, how do you do that? Obviously I could run a tape switch on here and then run it back to underneath the trigger guard. That way when my support hand sort of meets up with that, I could activate the light with the pressure that way. But as of now, I just threw it on there just because it looks ridiculous. It's just super cool. This is a really, really cool revolver. And coming from Performance Center, the trigger on this thing is sweet. But we'll talk about that a little bit more after we put some more rounds down range. So let's head back out and start slinging some lead. Now, like I mentioned, I have absolutely no idea where the zero is on this thing. So I'm back here at 25 yards now and got some steel to shoot at. Shout out to TA Targets for being a sponsor of Sunday Gun Day. If you guys have your own range and you want some high quality steel to shoot at, you can use code TalentSci on their website for 10% off of your order. Now from 25 yards, let's see where this little RMR is at. Woo! All right, so it looks like it's close enough. It might be a little bit high. That one shot at the hostage there went a little bit up into the dirt, but let's keep running this thing.
Now there's no doubt in my mind that this thing is accurate because of that five inch barrel, performance center tuning, trigger, all that good stuff. I'm back here at 50 yards now. I'm gonna try to put some shots down on steel, but this is just gonna come down to me being lucky if I get any hits because the RMR is definitely not zeroed super precisely and it's just the shooter at the same time. Let's do single action. Definitely high. Hey, there we go. Still high. Not so great, but it's just me and the optic. I'm running out of creative ways to shoot this thing. Oh, it's so hard to find the dot lefty. Where is it? Ah, <laughs> oh, there it is. That was it. I think it's time for a mag dump or a cylinder dump for the Patreon squad. Let's see how many we can actually get onto target. Not bad, but I think we can go a little bit faster. All right, one more. Not worried about accuracy this time, just as fast as possible. No Jerry, but still fun. All right guys, back for some thoughts on the Performance Center TRR-8. For starters, I'm definitely impressed with the gun, but it was kind of what I was expecting from the beginning. Smith & Wesson, and specifically Performance Center, makes phenomenal revolvers, and this thing is right on path with everything else that I have shot from Performance Center. The fit and finish on these revolvers is phenomenal. Even if I did kind of make it Gucci and weird with the red dot and light on there, probably gonna piss off some of the revolver purists out there, but hey. Now let's see if we can actually get a close up on this trigger. Cylinder is clear. Video is obviously not gonna do justice, but the double action, pretty heavy pull, but very, very smooth. And the more I shot this thing, the more predictable it became. Single action, super, super light. Just a little bit of pressure with the top pad of my finger there. And this is exactly what I would expect coming from Performance Center. I also have a video of the Performance Center, I believe it was the Model 19 with the compensated barrel. I'll leave a link for it right up here in the corner if I can find that video. But pretty similar to that, pretty comparable. Built on a different frame, however, this one is much bigger. You would think this would be super heavy, but because of that alloy that the frame is made out of, it's not quite as heavy as you might think. It's definitely a big revolver with some heft to it, but it definitely looks much heavier, especially with all the accessories on here. Now looking at this gun from just a normal guy's perspective, if you have a gun collection, I could definitely see why you would want something like this. I'm happy to have this in mind now. However, when it comes to actual practicality from a normal guy's standpoint, I'm just your everyday normal guy. I would obviously not carry a gun like this. I probably wouldn't even use it as like a nightstand gun. It doesn't really fit into any practical application for probably most people. But like I mentioned, the two things that are good about revolvers, especially from a tactical standpoint, is that you're not going to be dropping casings if you are firing this gun. And also, if you are a police officer or military running a riot shield, this thing would be great for that.
Now I know this video was quick, but I believe that's all I had for the Performance Center Model 327 TRR8. What a naming convention there. If you guys have any questions on this thing, let me know in the comments down below. You can find some behind the scenes photos and other things like that over on Patreon. And I think that is going to be all for this week. So if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos occasionally. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.